so before starting mode of action of antihistaminic agents we have to understand mode of action of histamine histamine acts by different mode of actions on different receptors activation of h1 receptor by histamine causes increase in phospholipase a2 and d activity it also increases the intracellular calcium 2 positive ion and increase in diacyl glycerol increase in the concentration of phospholipase a2 d diacyl glycerol and intracellular calcium 2 positive causes smooth muscle contraction increase capillary permeability vasodilation sensory nerve ending pain and itching on h2 receptors histamine causes increase in cmp here cmp stands for cyclic amino monophosphate cyclic amino monophosphate is a second messenger which is very important in many biological processes it is used for intracellular signal transduction mechanism increase in the concentration of second messenger causes increase in gastric acid secretion vasodilation of blood vessels and increased capillary permeability now action of histamine on s3 receptor s3 receptor is a presynaptic auto receptor type histamine activates s3 receptor and causes decrease in the concentration of second messenger cyclic amino monophosphate this causes decrease in histamine release decrease in secretion and decrease in vasodilation histamine role in allergy and anaphylaxis here anaphylaxis represents life threatening allergic reactions now as we discussed earlier that histamine binds to different receptors it binds majorly to h1 h2 and s3 receptor binding of histamine to these receptors causes different actions these actions include contraction of airway smooth muscle stimulation of secretions dilation and increase permeability of the capillaries and stimulation of sensory nerve endings all these actions combinedly produces different allergic reactions now if you are allergic to a substance your immune system overreacts by releasing chemicals that cause allergic symptoms next is general mode of action of antihistamines antihistamines blocks action of histamine at receptor they competes with histamine for binding and they displaces histamine from receptor in case of antihistamine therapy they are only beneficial when they are given in early stages of allergic reactions now we will understand mode of action of h1 antagonist h1 is a type of histamine receptor and it is a g protein coupled receptor now when histamine binds to h1 receptor it leads to formation of ip3 and release of stored calcium 2 positive ions followed by series of other events here ip3 is a signaling molecule and full form of ip3 is inositol triphosphate 
Now, formation of IP3 and release of stored calcium 2 positive causes contraction of bronchial smooth muscles and some allergic reactions. When H1 antagonists binds to H1 receptor, they causes blockage and prevents this activity. They lead to decrease in calcium 2 positive ion inside of the cell. This causes opposite effects. It means they relax in histamine induced contraction. Mode of action of mast cell stabilizers. Mast cell stabilizers inhibits degranulation of mast cell as well as other inflammatory cells triggered by different stimuli. Degranulation process occurs in mast cell in which histamine is released from histamine containing granules. Mast cell stabilizers inhibits the release of mediators of asthma like histamine, leukotrins, platelet activating factor and interleukins. The drug prevent mast cell and eosinophil activation by altering the function of delayed chloride channels. They alter the function of delayed chloride channels in the cell membrane. Here eosinophil is a specialized cell of immune system. It is a pro-inflammatory white blood cell. Next is mode of action of S2 receptor antagonist. S2 receptors are the second type of histamine receptors. These are G protein coupled receptors. S2 receptor antagonist displaces histamine from the S2 receptor. And because histamine activates cyclic amino monophosphate, S2 blockers lead to a decrease in the concentration of cyclic amino monophosphate and they also decrease the concentration of calcium 2 positive ions. Cyclic amino monophosphate is a second messenger which is important in many biological processes. It is used for intracellular signal transduction mechanism. Next category is of S3 receptor antagonists. S3 receptor is the third type of histamine receptor. It is a G protein coupled receptor. S3 receptor antagonist binds on S3 receptor and they decreases intracellular calcium 2 positive ion concentration. Decreasing the intracellular calcium 2 positive ion concentration results in the relaxation of smooth muscles. Thus they produces relief in histamine induced contraction. Next category is of proton pump inhibitors. So before starting mode of action of proton pump inhibitors, we have to understand what is proton pump. Proton pump is an integral membrane protein in the parietal cells of the stomach. It pumps proton into the stomach. By using ATP, an acidic hydrogen ion replaces a non-acidic potassium ion. Here ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It is the form of energy. Now in this picture, this H positive K ATP is, is proton pump. This pumps influx in this H positive ion and influx out the K positive ion. H positive ion combines with the Cl negative ion and produces HCl. The consumption of food stimulates acid secretion and acid secretion activates proton pump inhibitors. Then the activated proton pump inhibitor is converted to a sulfenamide in the acid secretory vesicles of the parietal cells. This sulfenamide 
then interacts covalently with sulfhydryl groups in the proton pump and makes a complex. That's how they irreversibly inhibits its activity.